Duolingo. One could say I'm, I'm a Duolingo fan. I've fluctuated, okay? All right? Today I'm gonna talk about, I think, a really important problem that Duolingo solves and attempts to solve. But if your goal is to efficiently learn a language, we have bad news. If I am not found after this video, uh, it's the owl. Duolingo. One could say Duolingo is just, it's a good meme. It's a good brand. I've gone back and forth. I loved Duolingo when I first started using it. it. It's what let me get ahead in high school for French. I learned what demonstratives were, whatever. I did this experiment in college. There's a video up on that, Duolingo versus Rosetta Stone. And I found that like Duolingo was not great. It was good for Spanish. It's probably good for French. But as someone who's two, three years deep into learning Japanese, it's not that great for Japanese. I say that as someone who has a degree in linguistics, and I say that as someone who sees these lessons, keeps skipping entire Duolingo units, but this video is not about Japanese. This video is about today, I was out at lunch and I had a discussion and I realized that Duolingo has a different mission and they have to work within specific constraints. And I think the direction they're going in is bad for someone like me, but it's great for someone who wants to do something other than be on social media. I should have gotten a clip on mic for this. Let's say you are like me and you're in high school. You're learning French. You realize that for the vocab tests, you can literally memorize the questions the morning of and be fine. You know all the car vocab you need for that exam. But then you're still on the present tense. You're just getting into the past. Language education in the US is not great. I think I had fantastic teachers, but that doesn't mean the system it's built upon is the best. Again, this comes to someone who's passionate about learning languages and has a, has a way that's worked for him. And I think I'm, even now my mentality is changing. There comes a moment where you keep doing this. You learn more vocab, you do a new unit, you want to learn French and you're just not happy. Well, you're going to start looking at places other than high school. You're going to be looking at the internet. For me, at the time, that was Duolingo when the owl looked a little creepy. It was a great tool because there was no attempt at user retention. We'll put it that way. Here's the thing. Duolingo's first goal, right, is language learning for all. That's accessible. That's accessible for a... 15 year old high school student who's like, bro, what are demonstratives? I want to be able to speak French because I'm going to visit Switzerland. So you you go online, you find a, a, this green owl and you, this is free. I love it. Language learning for all. That's Duolingo's first and primary mission. And I think they succeeded at that. I think they still do succeed at that. But the problem is what went wrong? Ads. The internet runs on ads. If you watched an ad before this video, thank you. I worked in ad tech for two years. Kind of have an understanding of why ads make the world run. Information has the right to be free. The brokers of those information have a responsibility to make it free, but they don't always have the ability to do that. Wikipedia, for example, is free and everything should be like Wikipedia. There are no ads on Wikipedia. You see that banner to ask for money sometimes though. Duolingo has to have ads and the free plan sucks right now. I haven't had it for about a year and a half. I've been on Duolingo Pro, whatever they call it, because the ads are just so annoying. I have the ability to pay for the, the pro plan or whatever. And I believe the company I'm paying, I believe in their mission. I believe in language learning for all. I think language learning should be more accessible. And therefore, I have no problem paying for the plan. And previously I had no problem paying for ads, but if you wanna learn a language and you have to lose three hearts constantly or to watch an ad between every lesson, your retention is inherently not gonna be there. So Duolingo's goals to world domination of language learning for all is amazing. And they're doing great stuff with English, by the way. This is not talking about their English education. This is this is me, some white dude learning a language online. So they're, 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 their head's in the right space. They're starting in the right spot. But the thing is, their goal is language learning for all in an accessibility way. What it's not is to get you to fluency. Duo's goal to world domination. The second one here is kind of be the best fun mobile app. Make language learning fun. This is a good way to get people into something. You do not want to start learning Japanese and have to do 150 vocab words a day. You don't want to learn these nuances. You don't want to learn how to write hiragana and katakana right away. I mean, all these different fancy characters and strokes and whatever. That's the hard way of learning a language. You want a fun and easy way of learning a language. That is Duolingo's mission to be the best mobile app, to be a fun, gamified way of learning a language. And that's where I think Duolingo pivots. I think where my opinion on language learning apps in general takes a very specific branching route. It's getting kind of hot. Hang on. So I'm learning Japanese. So I'm gonna talk from the scope of two Japanese tools that I use really well. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I'm not thumbs downing Duolingo. I could just talk about Anki as well. I had a discussion with some friends on Discord like a week ago, a couple days ago, I don't know. And we were all talking about like, man, Duolingo just isn't cutting it anymore. And I started asking myself like, why? Why is it not cutting it? Why do I just skip entire lessons? Where did the pen go? No! 
We're gonna change our context a little bit, right? You're in college, university, or you're older. You have an opportunity to go teach English in Japan and you get in, you get to the last interview. It feels like a rock solid, you're in. So you start learning Japanese and then the world goes into a shutdown because of some virus and you don't go to Japan, but you keep learning Japanese. One summer I sat down and it took me about a week to be slow at reading hiragana and katakana. That is because I had an immediate incentive. I didn't need language learning to be fun. And I, I think when you're learning something, when you're working on something, you have to embrace the hard way eventually at some point. This situation is different because I went on to learn Japanese and I just went on Quizlet and found some hiragana and katakana cards because I knew that was the base thing. It's like the ABCs of Japanese. You've been very loosely studying Japanese for about a year, a little bit, and you go all in. You find a website called Boompro and you find a website called Wanikani. Wanikani is its own hierarchy of teaching you radicals, kanji, and then vocab using those kanji, the non-phonetic uh, spelling system in Japanese. And Boom Pro teaches you grammar points. What is this particle? What is this object particle? What is subject particle? For, at the start, I was really into just learning how Japanese worked, and that really helped. The thing about Duolingo in this case is that I am no longer just looking to get a little bit ahead. I'm no longer looking for a, a free, accessible, fun language learning experience. I am looking for a serious, difficult, anything that comes with solid foundation and can be done quick is difficult to teach myself a very difficult language. If you sit down for 30 minutes a day and did Duolingo, as I kind of found, you will learn a lot. I don't think there's any dispute there. Whether you can do that on the free plan without losing your mind because of ads is debatable. However, I know that I can sit down for 10, 15 minutes on Wanikani, crunch out some vocab cards, Take some focus, took me a while to get there. I lost it for a year. I went from 900 words eventually to zero, it took me like three months. I think this is where Duolingo diverges. Because Duolingo has two options, right? First, they can become a language learning platform. Back when they had articles that explain what demonstratives were and the grammatical aspects of different languages, lists of vocab for different languages, sentences in use cases. You might not think the duck reading the newspaper is a useful sentence, but it really is. All you gotta do is learn the right vocabulary. But Duolingo kind of lacks that. So it's kind of on you to go find some flashcards and do the annoying space repetition memorization work. Takes a lot of focus because there's no levels, no experience, and do that on your own to find that vocabulary that fits into what Duolingo is teaching you. So Duolingo can take this path to become more like BoomPro and teach you grammar, the stuff that you might find in a textbook. The hardest way and the best way is just read material, watch TV. Now that I'm at a basic reading comprehension with Wani Kani and BoomPro, I need to be reading light novel. This is not about me and my failures of learning Japanese though, but that's what I should be doing. Duolingo had a second option though. They can either enter this market that exists of language learning tools, and then they become paid and you have to pay it to pretty much use it. And then they lose the goal, the first goal, right? They cannot be language learning for all if it's not free. Language learning cannot be accessible if it's not free. Ads suck, but at the end of the day, if you need to learn a language for free, Duolingo is there. So is Anki, but Duolingo is there. So the thing is they can't enter this market of BoomPro, Wani, Kani, and whatever, because it needs to be language learning for all. They want to provide you a platform or service, which Anki arguably does not. It's just space repetition flashcards that you have to set up on your own, but they can't because eventually you'd have to pay for it or someone big would have to sponsor it. And the problem is doing things the hard way is not popular. So if they want to become this paid language learning platform, they don't become language learning for all. So what they do become is a gamified social media learning app. I think this is where Duolingo gets its hate from. But I think if you change your perspective, you will understand its place in the world. If you need to learn a language, if you're gonna go live somewhere, if you're gonna do something, you are, in my opinion, better off going to find books, get a basic reading comprehension. I mean, like, That was in August of 2021. I was sitting on a porch doing that from Quizlet, writing out to memorize. If you want to learn and memorize, you, you got to do it. It sucks. It's boring. It requires a lot of focus and you, I'm still working up to more focus today, especially since I robbed myself of focus at the amount of YouTube I used to watch. So Duolingo is not that. I'm just going to say it now. If you want to learn a language and your goal is to really specifically learn a language and you need to, for some reason, Duolingo should not be an option. Maybe it's a tool in your toolbox. I mean, I, I have like 84 friend quests in a row and my streak is 560, 561 after. I'll, I'll do it. I swear. The thing is, it's fun. And so all of a sudden you get into this other thing. What if Duolingo doesn't enter this space of a language learning platforms, but instead enters a space of social media platforms? So this is where the perspective shift has to start, right? You're not comparing Duolingo to BoomPro to Wanikani to Anki. I haven't used too many things that are not Japanese. There's 
there's language learning platforms. There's like actually using the using the language, right? And then there's social media platforms. And I think this is where Duolingo clones get it wrong. They think they're cloning a, a language learning platform, but Duolingo is a social media platform. One of the best things about Duolingo is is the social aspect. Uh, personally, I mean, I love social aspects in games. I think having a social incentives gives you a lot of incentive, like motivation, no matter who you are. Maybe that's me personally, but that's aside the point. But you have these leaderboards, right? You're, you're trying to get from the Pearl League to the Obsidian League to the Diamond League. You have friend quests, which are magnificent in this in this way of like, oh, frick, I gotta do this friend quest. So I don't lose my, lose my 84 friend quest streak. And oh man, like this person's like probably reliant on me. It's great. It's incentivizing you to get on their platform and do a lesson. In some ways, Duolingo has been helpful. In the one way I can label, when someone asked me over the summer, tell me a sentence in Japanese, I gave them the sentence I had done on Duolingo that day. It was like, I'm in front of the electronic store or something. Cool, that was nice. And I've had conversations with friends like, oh, like do your streak or like, you know, it's fun. Fun to make jokes. There's a reason I have a plushie. I like what Duolingo's do it. I just think that you have to understand that it's not a language learning platform, it's a social media platform where you do learn a language. I think this is where the video kind of came together in my head today. Boom Pro wins if you want to learn Japanese. I told a friend, like, Boom Pro has these great grammar lessons. They got a mid vocab thing, but they got vocab decks for you. I, I'm sure that Duolingo's curriculum designers have a method behind what they're doing for Japanese, but the way that they treat negation and, and, and being different words and particles sometimes being part of a word and sometimes not, like gasuki des being a part of the thing that's being liked, it's just really weird to me. But that's, again, not the point. Will this efficiently teach me Japanese? and get me to a basic reading comprehension so I can start using the language. And I think this is the crux of my previous from like four or five years ago video on Duolingo versus Rosetta Stone and why I think Rosetta Stone ultimately won is because Rosetta Stone is a language learning platform. It's really boring. <laughs> kind of what you got to do. The lessons are 30, 40 minutes. It's not accessible in terms of cost. Duolingo versus TikTok. If you know anything about me, you know I don't have TikTok downloaded. You know I'm avid against downloading TikTok. And I just want to make this clear that I'm not going to shit on TikTok itself. If you use TikTok, no judgment. Media is meant to be consumed. I don't download TikTok because my attention span is very fragile. <laughs> I had to block YouTube and TV for a while to get myself out of those addictions. Even this last week, I've been on Twitter so much, like it's been like 45 to an hour a day on Twitter because I'll, I'll open it in my off time. I just open Safari, open Twitter. I don't have the app downloaded, but I can still access Twitter and I'm trying not to. But when you look at Duolingo versus TikTok and you think to yourself, what do I want in life? I think that Duolingo is the victor. I have had people tell me, oh, you have a language gene for learning Japanese. And that pisses me off because then I open Toggle and I show them thing hours of Japanese spent over the span of 12 months. There's no gene here. There is hours of, of studying. I don't think I have that much hours to show for, but that's because I don't use the language and it's not beside the point. But when you look back on your day, and this is a genuine question. When you look back on your day, you look at your screen time on your phone and you see two hours of TikTok. Is that what you want to see? I think if you're looking, if you're on the bus and you're looking to kill time, social media is great, which for me, YouTube was several hours a day, by the way. So I'm using TikTok because I think short form content is like the bane of humanity's evolution, but <laughs> that's my media can be consumed, but in moderation and short form content ruins attention. I'm not trying to extrapolate myself to other people, but I feel like I've seen it. Or would you rather look back on your day and see two hours of language learning? Again, two hours on Duolingo versus two hours on Boom Pro. We know where I stand, but two hours on Duolingo and two hours on TikTok, that's not bad. If you spend two hours on Duolingo, I truly believe you could be very far in a month. And so if, and I, I believe the CEO of Duolingo has talked about this, but if they can continue down this path, not competing with Boon Pro and Anki and not competing with what I would consider legitimate language learning platforms versus, again, Duolingo's in this area of TikTok, YouTube, it, things that are grabbing your attention, right? All right, so you have TikTok on the bottom left here. Super stimulating. If you're bored in four seconds, you skip to the next video. If you're bored in 0.5 seconds, you skip to the next video. All those analytics are being measured. So very minuscule step up, we'll say is YouTube not including shorts. I think shorts are on the level of TikTok as are reels. YouTube literally rewards the longer you can keep a, a person engaged, which is what Mr. Beast's entire philosophy is based on. I know he's getting a lot of shit right now. Attention needed for TikTok, not that much. YouTube, a little bit more. If you sit down and watch this video, if you're still watching, for example, some element of attention is needed. Maybe you've gone off and done something else, cool. But you need some amount of attention to say, yeah, you know what, this this guy is rambling about Duolingo and I think he's he's got a point, I'm gonna keep listening. If there comes a point where it's not valuable anymore, you, you go away, that's fine. Let's take something else. Meditation is, uh is an iffy one where it is on the board. I think meditation exists everywhere on the board at the same time. In this specific case, 
Meditation is where you sit there and you tell yourself, stop thinking for however long you're trying to meditate for. Single best activity you can do for your attention, in my opinion and experience. One step above that is hard work. I sit down to work on this web app, to code it, whatever. 10 minutes in, I'm like, ah, oh, I'm slowing down. I'm gonna check Discord, notification goes off on your phone. This is why I have notifications off on my phone because my focus is so hard to wrangle. But I do it, you know, you get by, you get better at it as you keep trying. For me, at least, it's a constant battle of Discord. Is it really that important to check Discord right now? Is my email really urgent? Hard work also classifies me looking at my Wani Kanye and going, oh God, I didn't do it yesterday. I have 214 vocab words to review. Someone send help. I'll put TikTok and Twitter. I will die before I call it X. There's a lot of research on something called the flow state. If you've never heard of it. I highly encourage you looking it up. It's the idea that you have something that's in between challenging and easy enough that you get engaged working on it. To go from TikTok and Twitter to a language learning platform like WaniKani or BoomPro is a huge leap. They can do whatever they want to try and keep you engaged, but at the end of the day, it's a really big leap to get here, to the hard work, to the hard work that gets shit done. Duolingo does not want to be up here. Duolingo does not want to be hard work. Hard work is necessary to get things done. If you are talented, you will eventually hit a plateau. Are you prepared for that? Hard work is necessary. Duolingo needs to be down here and Duolingo is down here. 99 times out of 100 in the last two years that I've opened up Duolingo, it has been because of streaks or friend quests. I have gone on and I have done Duolingo for 40 minutes because I had to hit 800 experience for a friend quest. Open it up because I almost forget to do my streak. Or I go, I open it up and I think I need to do it now, otherwise I'm not gonna remember when I get back from jujitsu and I'm gonna forget and whatever. Maybe it's because I have Boom Pro and Wani Kani and I'm at a point where I can force myself to sit down and do those things. But it's a whole other question. But I'm not opening it to learn a language. I am opening it because I have to. Because Duolingo is gamified. Because Duolingo is more a game than it is a language learning platform. And that is my point. If you look at Duolingo as a language learning, I don't know why my language learning platforms are over here and social media is over here, but it, we're gonna roll with it. If you look at Duolingo as a language learning platform, I'm sorry, it just doesn't get good ratings. The rate at which it teaches vocabulary and sample sentences in Japanese, I just don't get. It's been too long since I've done the French stuff. A friend of mine said the other day that, I'm not trying to call someone out by name. It's just because I agree with the statement. It's so gamified that I have no motivation to actually learn. But if you look at it as a social media application, and you look at your phone and your screen time and you're gonna, and you're waiting for a bus. TikTok and Twitter content is ephemeral. It's gonna die. There are some valuable things out there and I think that's the gambling mindset that comes in that tells you to, you know, keep watching it. At least it's for me, that's part of why I keep going on Twitter because I'll see valuable things. Duolingo is this, it's, it's getting you to do language for five minutes a day, not because you can learn a language in five minutes a day, but because five minutes a day on Duolingo is, I, I don't want to say better than five minutes a day on TikTok because if you can spend five minutes a day on TikTok, you have the attention span and the moderation ability of an ancient stoic. TikTok and Twitter and YouTube and Duolingo are designed to keep you on the platform. Duolingo's only edge is that it's productive. Would you rather on the bus look at TikTok and maybe learn how to cook something that you never end up cooking or go on Duolingo to learn a language you, you've said you've always wanted to learn? That's, that's the crux here. And I think Duolingo is doing a really good job at that. They also have to optimize for daily active users because that's their main metric for stockholders, which sucks. Friend quest, friend streaks, all the guilt and that you get out of those. I think I'm gonna put documentaries and I just came up with this. So I don't know if this idea is gonna fully form. If you look at documentaries as a way to learn it, assuming factual and well-produced, they're good. They're, you're gonna teach something, but you need attention for it. Marvel movies versus documentaries is TikTok versus Duolingo, in my opinion. They're both meant to entertain you. They're both designed to capture your intention, but Marvel movies, it's designed to give you a good time. Duolingo is designed to give you a good time, but also you're gonna learn a language at, while you're at it. A documentary is like, you're gonna enjoy sitting down, but you're gonna learn something about World War II. Can I change the color? Can I do that? Hell yeah, that's blue, baby. Duolingo's not gonna make that leap. It's really difficult to make. I've been trying to make that leap for the last three and a half years. <laughs> Going from my YouTube brain and blah, blah, blah. I still use blockers and I still give in sometimes. And you be bored more, all right? If you get bored, you, you just, Things happen. The problem that Duolingo solves is that language is accessible now. It's really a pain in the ass with the ads, but what they're doing with English is amazing. And the fact that anyone can go on and have fun doing it, it's impeccable. Problem that Duolingo creates is that it's not hard work. You can certainly make it hard work, but it's not. You've got all these levels, experience, these, these things that are giving you motivation to, to learn a language. That is every motivation in the book, except for actually learning the language, which I think is very fascinating. This problem is not a problem if you change your opinion of Duolingo being a language learning platform and make it a social media platform. That's my point. Duolingo gets a lot of shit. 
I've given it some shit in the past because I always look at it as a language learning platform. I only have enough understanding of Japanese and can, can read it at like the N4 level because I've practiced and I've studied. I can see all my practice books from last year. I'm taking the N4 again in December. But if I'm gonna be on the bus back from martial arts and I'm tired and I don't wanna open my sketchbook and draw, it feels like too much effort. And I open my phone and I have two options, Safari slash Twitter and Duolingo. Duolingo is the better option because it's it's bringing me towards something that I've always wanted to do, whereas Twitter is just killing the time. Duolingo is also killing the time, admittedly, but Twitter's just killing the time. Maybe I say all this because I'm someone who wants to learn a language, but if you come to this idea of Duolingo gamifying music and math, again, it's a question of accessibility. They give you this digital piano to learn music and read notes. Not everyone has access to a piano and all that, but you can also find a digital piano app on your phone, right? That's all I want to talk about today. Stop looking at Duolingo as a language learning platform. They didn't deviate from their, from their initial mission. Their mission of let's make language learning a globally accessible thing. You don't have to go to school for it and whatever. Duolingo has not failed in their mission to become a, a globally accessible language learning platform. However, they are just a gamified social media learning app now. It's not worse or better than Boom Pro because it can't be compared to Boom Pro. I don't mean to shit on people who go on social media, but like, what do you really get out of spending five hours of tic on TikTok? I don't get it, but be bored. See what you find in that boredom. The time's gonna pass anyway. So watch TikTok, do Duolingo, go for a swim, go for a run, dance in the rain. I don't really care, all right? I just think that Duolingo gets a lot of shit for good reason if you look at it as something it's not. But at the end of the day, the core of it is really important. Yeah, that's it. My name is Mark, unemployed software engineer. So I'm going crazy. Oh, and don't forget to uh, stay awesome. Thanks for watching.